Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share us with your network. All right, so how many of us have been watching TV, gone to the movies, and thought to myself, myself, ourselves, you know what I mean, I can do that. How many of us thought, I want to be an actor, I want to be on the big screen, the small screen, or even on stage? What does it actually take? Is it really that hard? And can I do that? Well, today I want to introduce you to an actress, a photographer, a writer, and a host of other things. Y'all, please say hello to my friend, Jemiah Dancel. Hi, Jemiah. Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm Jemiah Dancel, and I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, Ricky, for having me on your Faith on a Friday oh my gosh. podcast show. No, yes. it is my pleasure to have you here. I've been wanting to do this for a while, and we'll get into that a little bit. But, Jemiah, there are so many people who are watching this thinking, I always wanted to be an actress. So tell me a little bit of where, where you got started on that. Um, so I actually did some drama um, in theater in high school, and it was something that I was just kind of always interested in. Um, but I did the whole family thing first. So got married, had my babies and everything like that first before I decided to even pursue that type of career because and all honestly, you when you think of acting or you think about the entertainment industry, for me, it was a little bit intimidating. And so to have a family and then those thoughts of intimidation from the actual entertainment industry, I was like, uh, oh, I'll just put that on hold for a while. Um, mm -hmm. Long story short, my oldest daughter, she got into modeling. And in the midst of her getting an agent for modeling, I somehow got thrown into the mix and... <laughs> Wow. Ended up with a with an agent for acting, mm -hmm. and so from there, it's the rest is kind of history. That was like how I got started in the industry. Wow! And how long have you been an actress? How long have you been acting? So I've been professionally. Acting I mean, since, yeah. So I've been acting professionally since the end of towards the end of twenty nineteen. So. Okay. About four or five years right now so far. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Now you and I've met. Um, on a play that you and I did together called The Colored Museum that was directed by Tiffany and Christopher Brooks at the time. Shout out to the Brooks clan. Um, that's Shout where I first Brooks. met you. <laughs> <laughs> that is where I first met you. We had so much fun doing that. Now, was that something that you found and auditioned for? Or because I always wondered as actresses, where do you find your roles at? Do people find you or are you looking for them? Yes, that's a really great question. Um, so I was on the Colored Museum, the Brooks production, because I met them through a mutual friend. So when it was time for them to start casting for that play, it was somebody who knew somebody that knew somebody who was like, hey, I know a girl who can act and um, <laughs> she's really good, and, you know, and they connected us. And that's how I ended up with that role. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty much. So when you're looking to get started in this industry, if you're looking for gigs, mm -hmm. the number one way to me that I think um, is efficient is mm -hmm. to actually start joining certain casting sites. Now, mm -hmm. some of them make you pay for them, but it depends upon the casting site. If it's a legitimate one, I think it's actually worth the little fee that they'll charge you to submit to castings. And that's a way to go for people who, to me personally, this is just all my opinion, um, who's just getting into the industry and they don't have an agent mm -hmm. and they just want to start putting themselves out there. Another way to me, and this is all just my personal experience <laughs> and um, what I think is networking, you know, uh, networking is really big. A lot of the things that I have done and a lot of the films that I've worked on, it's just simply me knowing somebody who knows somebody and just getting out there. And I know networking can be a little intimidating for some people, but mm -hmm. it really don't have to be. You know, if you are serious about being in the industry, just go to some industry events and just start talking to people and you'll be surprised at where 
that elite you. Yeah, I, I can imagine because networking works for any industry that you're in. <laughs> now, you are here in the El Paso area. A lot of people mm-hmm. think that, well, you're in El Paso. What acting gigs are going to come to you here? You have to be in L.A. You got to be in New York. Mm-hmm. What do you say to that? Well, um, you know, in all honesty, location is a big factor and it really does matter. And I actually started my acting career in Hawaii where, you know, it was an extension of L.A. and New York and some of the bigger markets. So coming here to El Paso, it was, you know, I had a lot of those same thoughts and it was a little uh, discouraging for me because I'm like, we're here in El Paso. How can we make this work? But my thing is you bloom where you're planted, you know? And so if you happen to be somewhere that's not one of those major cities, just look around, start trying to immerse yourself in the local community of wherever you are. If it's a place like El Paso, and I was actually pretty shocked that El Paso do have a nice small little film and entertainment um, industry community here. That's Mm -hmm. pretty cool. And, you know, I still go for the big job. I'm still able to submit myself for gigs that are on a national level. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, I engulf myself in what's happening here on the local level as well. So if you're in a city where you feel like, hey, it's not LA, it's not New York, it's not Atlanta or any of those other bigger places, Mm -hmm. just know that, hey, starting local is a thing and it's okay to do and just build yourself up to that. And then also because we're in 2023, where you have Zoom and you have the internet and you have all of these other factors um, available to you and resources available to you, you don't have to be in those major cities to get a start or to get gigs. So true. Now, one of the things you talked about earlier was agents. Now, I can say I'm an agent online because everybody is and does. (laughs) It is what it is. So so say you're looking for an agent. What sort of things should you be looking for to find a good agent that is reputable? Mm. So I always say go for an agent that has that's affiliated with the SAG, which is SAD AFTA, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, It's basically a union based agent. Mm -hmm. They're typically more reputable and a little bit more legit. Um, mm-hmm. So that's one of the things that I would recommend. Um, another thing that I would rec- I would recommend is to also do your research, like do your research, Re- meaning go to the website, mm-hmm. go to their Instagram, look and see who they are representing mm-hmm. um, and just try to vet them as well as you can yeah. before you sign. And then another thing, the number one thing you should always remember when you're looking for an agent, if somebody come and they're like, hey, you need to pay this amount of money to be a part of my agency, nine out of 10 times, it's probably a scam. Wow. Real agents do not ask for money up front. They mm-hmm. get a percentage on the back end of whatever you make when you get paid. So, okay. um, I, yeah, so a lot of people are getting scammed out here because they're like giving people money for certain stuff. And it's just like, no, that's not how it works. They might ask you for some money um, to cover your headshots, maybe depending upon the agent. If they mm-hmm. pay for it, they might want to recoup it back. But sure. that's about as far as it goes. They're not going to ask you to pay about some money just to be a part that of it. That is so good to know because you hear it all the time. Oh, I had an agent. My agent said I only had to pay them $3,500 to be part of their thing. And you're saying, no, no, not that guy. Mm-hmm. No, that's, that's not that's not how it works. Yeah. No. I, I love hearing that. That is y'all heard it. It is not how it works. So stop giving them people your money. You mentioned yes, headshots. Your money. <laughs> That's right. You mentioned headshots. How important is a headshot for an actor or an actress? And what should your headshots really look like? Okay. So headshots are extremely important. Like extremely, extremely important to the sense of where it's like that is your resume. I'll say headshots is probably just as important or more important to the resume because they see you first. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing they're going to look at. So you want to make sure that your headshots are like flawless. You want to make sure that they represent what you look like, Mm -hmm. Um, not what you look like five years ago or two years ago or whatever. Like you want to 
One, constantly get them updated. Two, mm-hmm. make sure they, that they're a representation of you and also the type of character that you would want to play. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you headshots. Yeah, you want to make sure your headshots are good. You have good ones. You mentioned about, you know, they need to look like you and represent the characters you want to play. So most folks think that, oh, in order to be an actor, an actress, you need to be, you know, between 18 and 25. But we all know that that's not really true because there's actors of all age, genders, colors, the whole nine. So how do you represent an, an, uh, a character that you want to play in a headshot when you're trying to make it look like yourself? Um, you literally like just you present yourself mm-hmm. in that way and then you think about what character would come easy to you. So like if you're an educated person mm-hmm. and you walk around and you dress in suits and you look educated and that's kind of what you the role that you could easily play because it's really close to your personality and who you are then uh, you know you would want to have your headshot look similar to that i, I mean and you could also have a couple of different types of headshots you could have your commercial headshot or your theatrical headshot in between the two of those type of headshots it would be you could choose like okay if i'm that bad boy then I just mm-hmm. throw a, a bomber on if I know I can. That's the type of role I'm gonna get. Then awesome. I'll that's the that's what my headshot is gonna reflect. Mm-hmm. If I know that I'm going for roles that looks more like an educated detective or lawyer or something like that, then I'm gonna you know stick to a blazer type look. Or I can have both if I have the versatility to cross between those type those different character types. So yeah. I mean, that that's something I would have never thought of because, you know, um, in, in the corporate America, you get a headshot, you put on your, you know, your white shirt and your dark blazer and you stand there and you get a headshot and keep it moving. But what you're saying mm-hmm. is looking at as an actor, you want to dress, if you will, to have your headshots taken in what you would, you know, in a role that you would. That, that's really interesting to me. That's so yes, cool. Yeah. And so, then also another thing that um, I was taught as well is like, when you're taking headshots. So this was a tip that I got from someone in the industry that's been in it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Recite a monologue in your head. Like if you know the monologue that represents a role that you're interested in, mm-hmm. while you taking while you actually in front of the camera, recite right. that monologue and it's all in the eyes. You okay. want to tell a story with your eyes through your headshots. Wow. Now, so yes. coach people in public speaking and I tell them things like that, you know, it's your eye contact that's going to make the connection, you know, make sure it your your story is going to represent you and it needs to come across in your voice, on your face and in your eyes. But you are saying recite the monologue in your head because in the headshot, the eyes are going to tell your story. Yes, hmm. your eyes. So if you if something is going on in the head and it's you know, reflective of what that character type is that you want to go for. Man, Magic. <laughs> that That is really cool. Now, you mentioned something else. You said education. So it made me think of, you know, do you all, do you go through classes? Are there acting classes that you go to? Are there theater workshops? Mm-hmm. What about those things? Uh, yes. Listen, I have to stress the importance of training. Like okay. that is, even the top actors and actresses in the industry today, most of them still train. Like you, you can have natural talent. You can come into this industry and have some things already there, but mm-hmm. you, there's nothing like training and right. honing and just enhancing that skill as best as you can. Right. Um, so for me, I was kind of thrown into this in the sense of, like I said, my daughter was modeling. She ended up with an agent. I ended up with an agent. And mm. my this agent was sending me on these auditions. And mm. even though I had some natural talent and ability, I was like, I want to feel comfortable and I want to feel secure within mm. uh, myself. And so that's the first thing I did was found me an acting coach and an acting school. And mm. so I've been training since I got back into the industry and um, actually became professional at it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I have. So I started with someone in Hawaii. Her name is Ishelle. Shout out to Ishelle. Um, Ishelle Lopez. She is amazing, mm-hmm. really talented. So I started with her. And then along the line, along the way, sorry, 
I would like just pick up with other acting coaches and just, you know, if I could hop in a class, if I saw someone was holding a workshop, if I saw something was going on, I would just hop in there. So at this point, up until this point, I continuously train. And then I've also trained with a lot of other people as well worldwide. Um, and so training is important. Yeah. Find somebody that you can train with. If you're in an area where acting is not a big industry and you feel like you don't know if you can find somebody that's legit, we are, yeah. again, in 2023. You can go online. You yeah. can go via Zoom. All of these um, big major acting schools and reputable people, they are offering their services via Zoom. Um, wow. So, yeah, you could find the school, mm -hmm. um, see your acting teacher via Zoom and you know, right. get your skills improved. That it is amazing. And now, Jemai, I know that you've been in a couple of things on TV. Can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about what you've been doing? <laughs> so, um, as of right now or previously? Or... Well, previously. Okay, so previously, um, I was in a, a show called Dope Sick on Hulu. And I was I had a non-speaking role, but it was a pretty nice role or whatever. Um, so I was on Dope Sick. I also had a series regular role on a show called Dolos. It um, airs on the local El Paso CW. So I have a recurring role on that show. Um, I have also been in um, as a non-speaking role in a, a movie called Wanted Man. It hasn't aired yet. I don't know when it's going to air or what it's going to air on, but it's still, I believe, in post-production. Okay. Um, what else have I been on? Let's see. Um, I'm actually on the local project here in El Paso that hasn't been released yet called called Misfits. Okay, I created, I wrote, produced, and created my own film called Intersected this earlier this year. <laughs> that's now making its film festival run, and I actually had a, wrote myself a role in that. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I just was cast for the lead role in the movie called Clutch. Um, and this particular film, it is a Maverick Entertainment production. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to be playing the role of a female detective. I can't give too many details. No, I can't imagine you again, could. <laughs> <laughs> again, uh, yes, it hasn't started filming yet. But for this role, I can say that the character is a skilled martial artist. So I've been training with a pro fighter right now so that I could learn the skill set to um, wow. bring this character to life. So yeah, training has been intense. Imagine <laughs> but it's, it's fun. It's fun. And we'll wow. be starting to film that the end of this month. Yeah, mm -hmm. filming is going to take place here in El Paso and then mm -hmm. um, some in Miami. It should be out by the end of the year. I'm pretty excited about the project because well, not only am I the lead, thank you, thank you. Not only am I a lead actor in this project, but I'm also a producer on the project. Shout out to Brian Thompson. <laughs> it's a Brian Thompson film. He is amazing. Okay. He's great. So he brought me on as a producer. So I get to help him with things behind the camera, which I really love. So I was able to help him with casting, uh, yeah. which was cool because I was able to come in and cast some people that I knew here in El Paso and some of the lovely people that I've worked with since I've been here. Um so yeah, it's, it's been it's been great. So what and you just like, said yeah. is there is work out here. There's work. And so people who, who say, I can't find anything, I'm not something ain't quite right because you are working. Oh yeah, I'm working, working hard. I love I see, <laughs> I love that. Now, Jamai, I we talked a little earlier and I just I want to ask you this again. Now, do you help other actors and actresses? find work or do you have something in the works to start helping people do that? Uh, yes, I do help people. If they come to me um, and they need something, of course, I don't mind if I can, whatever I can do to help, I, I do. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, what I'm in the process of doing is putting together an actor's group or class here in El Paso. Mm -hmm. And in those groups slash classes, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll be um, actually helping actors behind the scenes um with their career like giving them information on how they can get agents how they can keep their actors materials updated how they can find jobs that they don't have agents and then also um how they can improve their skill set 
So I'll actually be in those classes, like helping them find the resources they need for mm-hmm. whatever it is that they may need on their journey, whether it's like the things that I just mentioned or improving their skill set. I got um, Yeah. So, so Jemai, if somebody wanted to reach out and connect with you, where would they find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Maya J's. That's M I A H J A Y S, mm-hmm. or on Facebook, um, Jemaya Dancel. Those are All my, right. my Instagram social media handles. Sounds good, y'all. You will want to connect with her if you are an aspiring actor. She is definitely the person you want to get with. Why? Because she is working, y'all. And don't forget, if you did not get all of her information, don't worry. It's all going to be in the description below. And while you're here, like, subscribe, and share our content as well. Jemaya, my friend, before I let you go, we have to play a game. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I so like this games, game. So. It's called This or That. I'm going to give you the choice of a couple of things, and you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready okay. to play, my friend? Let's do it. Let's do this. Android or iPhone? iPhone, hands down. Wow. It's the attitude (laughs) for me, girl. Okay. Yellow light, speed up or slow down? Speed up. (laughs) Girl, get your life together. Speed up. (laughs) Wallflower or life of the party? Life of the party. Mm, I can definitely see that. House slippers or bare feet? House slippers. Mm. Eat to live or live to eat? Um, eat to live. Okay. Yeah, so extra sure. fries or exercise? Exercise all day. Mm-hmm. I can see Put that. Put them fries okay. down. Put them fries down. Mm-mm. They ain't where that. <laughs> Don't judge me, Jemai. I'm just putting that out there, okay? <laughs> Reality TV. Yes, please. Or I just can't. I can't. Me neither. I just cannot do it. I can't. Prince or Michael mm-hmm. Jackson? Neither. <laughs> what? Well, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Michael I don't know Jackson. if we could be friends anymore right now. <laughs> I don't know. He said I'm neither. Not... <laughs> I don't even know what to do with it. I don't even know where to go from here. <laughs> Never had no. that before. No. Actually, I love Michael. So Michael all day. Yes. I okay. think I think with Prince, Prince is like but like it ain't my era so i don't know how to connect to it so i'll say michael <laughs> oh my gosh we are so having a conversation later super bowl yes. the commercials or the game that's what that's a real need there <laughs> not even the halftime I'll show what? nothing okay i'll say halftime show if it's that type of event if not then i'll say the game Okay. okay, I'm not mad yeah. about it. And finally, my friend, what would people need to know about you that they don't already? Um, that is a really great question. <laughs> um, what's something that somebody would need to know about me that they don't already know? Hmm. Let's see. Besides that you have a problem with Prince, continue. Yeah, I, I'm not letting it go, friend. Sorry. Uh, maybe that I'm a health fanatic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm one of those people, this healthy kick, really picky when it comes to food. Mm-hmm. If it's not, if it's not, if I don't know where it's sourced from, if I don't know where it came from, wow. I don't want it. And I read the labels on everything. You are going to live forever, girl. I don't even get it. <laughs> Jemaya, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you, girl. (laughs) Yes, no, thank you for having me. This was amazing. It was fun. Had a wonderful time. I can't wait to come back and do it again. (laughs) Oh, I love love the self-invite. We're going to talk about that. (laughs) All right, everybody. That's it this time. But don't worry. We'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents. (laughs) 